right absolutely you're still hanging up with us right here on why in the morning today being a monday it's all about mcm and this is the last segment of today's morning show but for us things first let's have a relationship on our social media on that hashtag which is why in the morning at y254 underscore channel on the gram facebook and Insta and facebook and twitter including tiktok at y254 channel if you want to see who is the best dancer in the morning show please if we check out our TikTok handle, which is at Y254 channel. But mine as well is at Brian Sako 101. Hashtag, hashtag in the morning. Si Sako, please. Sako niangu pekeangu. All right. <laughs> now, today being World Environment Day, Karibu Nsema Environmental Day, there's a lot to actually uh, to talk about. And I love that the fact that, you know, from our first segment to the last day, we're just talking about, you know, how to conserve our environment. And the hashtag again is best plastic pollution. But before that, let me try to just get a little bit excerpt on uh, the way forward, some of the statistics and what uh, pertains regarding that topic. About it, so uh, it says, if we act now, we can beat plastic pollutions. That is according to the United Nations. And the theme for this World Environmental Day will focus on solutions for plastic pollution under the campaign Again, on the hashtag plastic pollution. So what are some of the activities expected in marking World Environmental Day? And according to the United Nations, World Environmental Day will be hosted in Cote d'Ivoire, supported by Netherlands. And the theme will focus on, once again, plastic solution. But now, let's narrow it down to our country, Kenya. When it comes to the use and also, you know, uh, protecting our environment, we just remember we've come from, you know, a dispensation of extreme dry conditions to now, you know, there's rain and now the rains are gone a little bit. But then the president has been very vocal, especially when it comes to matters global warming. Are there things that we can do as netizens of our country to ensure that we combat climate change that also leads to global warming? And, and I think the two actually intertwine. Global warming, climate change. By the way, uh, so, Joining us in studio are two powerful gentlemen who will actually help us to actually uh, demystify this. Are there things that we are known for as Kenyans that actually lead to, you know, environment pollution, especially when it comes to plastic? There's a time Nemo introduced a plastic ban, and I think we're still uh, struggling from the transition of totally living without plastics. Is there a way we can permanently eradicate plastics? Or, or if not, is there a way that we can still live with plastics but then use them responsibly? And how can we sensitize our young people, even the old as well, to ensure that you are sensitive towards you know, protecting the environment? And the topic is, what are some of the misconceptions that actually surround this? Are there you know, wrong answers? <laughs> are there right answers? Definitely we'll be getting to that in just a bit. But joining us live in studio are two powerful gentlemen. One of them has been here before. He goes by the name Devin Majale. He's a media student at the University of Nairobi. And then we've got uh, Abraham Ikokonyi. He's new to the show as well. But he's a geospatial engineering student at the University of Nairobi. And I love the fact that you guys are young minds. And this is something that you know you guys would love to take on. First of all, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning to you as well. Good morning, uh, all right. So uh, let's get into it right up. You know, when it comes to matters like uh, environment, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that go in there. But then this is like they're focusing specifically on plastics. Is there a way that we can live without, you know, a world where there are no plastics? And then if yes, what will replace plastics? And if no, what can we do? So I can start with you, Devin, and then I can come back to you, Abraham. Well, thanks, Agua. Well, according to me, we cannot just do away with plastics once and for all. We need them in a way or the, or the other. I mean, as much as we might try to, you know, slow down the use and how we engage them in our daily activities, they are quite also important on our activities too. So as much as they are harmful to the environment, we cannot just run away from them directly and avoid them completely. We have to engage them in a few activities here and there, though they are so harmful to the environment. And well, I can say we have to reduce the use and try to, you know, incomplicate other stuff that maybe seem to be like an alternative to plastics. Yeah. Okay, uh, Abraham, do you think we can live in a world where permanently I couldn't have plastics, especially <laughs> we narrow it down to Kanaira? Because if you look at some of the biggest dumping sites in Dandora mm. and the rest, uh, actually the biggest, uh, the biggest pile near plastics, and they always end up at a drainage site in a lake or an ocean or at a river somewhere. You know, do you feel like it's possible to issue kwa Nairobi in your high plastics totally? Personally, I can see that uh, living in the world 
uh, with no plastics. Uh, as much as we are looking at the perspective that the people of Kenya, mm. the population is so high. So okay. if you are to eradicate plastics, for example, it's a matter of time, and maybe what are the new procedures uh, the government is to take? Uh, coming back uh, yes. from a tiny memorial, we've been using the ceramics, the ones, you know, the, 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 the ones, like the mech from, if you are to talk of glasses, for example, we've been having the ones from uh, silica, the soil med uh, ones, the soil med equipments, for example, the glasses talking of. So if we are to eradicate plastic, that means we are to go back to where we came from. Yeah. We are to start using the, 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 the utensils, you know, the ones made from soil. Yeah. Yeah. That is what I can say. If we are to eradicate it, then we have to get stringent measures to curb the usage of uh, the plastics that is. All right. Yeah. Uh, let me jump back to you, Devin. Uh, when it comes to environment, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that come into play. Not just plastics, but there's a lot of contributors that lead to pollution. But now, uh, let's narrow it down to the day. Uh, Wild Environment Day. What comes to your mind exactly when this day pops up? Well, World Environment Day, to me, this is a very important day because it teaches how to be, you know, you know, get ourselves in a position where we care about more about our environment and not just what we think is right. We might think when I do this to the environment, when I dispose this stuff here is going to be good to the environment, but maybe it has repercussions and maybe later on we'll come to regret. So on such a day we have to really sensitize ourselves and you know get to know more about what does it take to take care of an environment and what are the benefits when you're taking care of your environment, when you are, you know, you are conscious and, you know, you are much concerned on what you are doing on, I mean, everything, whatever you're handling, how you're handling your stuff, how you're disposing everything, how is your cleanliness, sanity, it all talks about environment, how you are polluting the environment, Do you, are you taking measures to, you know, prevent pollution and all such like kind of stuff. And so today, I can say everybody has to be, you know, ready to get more information and embrace this day and also create awareness to other people because it means a lot when it comes to our lives because this is something that affects us one on one. I might do something, maybe I just bought a bag and then I dispose it, you know, not minding of how it will end up. but. Later on, it, it might not affect me directly, but it must have some, you know, impact on somebody else. And maybe the circle will still come back to me and affect me directly. And so we have to be careful on what we do. If you are, if you are handling anything, it can be foodstuffs, it can be anything. I mean, in your daily activities, how you are working, and I mean, let's just be conscious of our environment and, you know, be careful. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I picked up the Senior Mesema measures, but we'll talk about that towards the tail end. Uh, Abraham, what comes to your mind when uh, you think of oh, world climate? Personally, uh, when um, I think of the World Environment Day, mm -hmm. there are a number of things that come to my mind. One is on uh, pollution. As a matter of fact, when we are to talk of an environment day, what are the things we are doing to make sure that we live in an environment free of pollution? Two, uh, we are talking of matters to do with energy distribution or, you know, effective use of uh, the renewable sources of energy. So what are the ways in which we can make them uh, reach? There's so many people who are depending so much in the, on the re non-renewable sources. Mm -hmm. I think that is one of the ways, the, the, the distribution and uh, awareness, creating awareness on the use of uh, renewable forms of energy is one of the ways in which we can ensure there is sustainability in the ensuring we are living in the, an environment that right. suits humanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think those are the things. Another thing I should say uh, comes to my mind when I talk of the World Environment Day is on matters climate change. Right. As a matter of fact, we are living in an environment where the climate as a matter, as an issue, is uh, gradually changing over time. 
Right. So should we live in a in the misconception part of it that mm -hmm. uh, maybe climate, you know, is a right. natural thing? Climate right. change is a natural thing or something yeah. like that. It's like, you know, the universe just cleans itself. Sure. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden, magic will happen, the mm -hmm. dirt will go, and then yeah. we remain with clean environment. Mm -hmm. But indeed, it's us who will have to take action and do that. Yeah. All right. And still on that, then, uh, uh, st I can ask you this question. Yeah. What are some of the things that we do, especially in Kenya here, and now specifically down to Nairobi, that actually lead to uh, climate pollution? Because uh, this year's hashtag is beat climate, uh, mm. beat plastic pollution. But yeah. then plastic has been mentioned a lot. Is it like the main, 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 main pollutant before we get to like, what are some of the misconceptions? Yeah. Is it the main pollutant? And what are some other activities that we do that lead to pollution? So we've uh, talked of uh, plastic dumping mm -hmm. as uh, one of the ways in which we pollute the environment. Right. I should say we have a number of ways in which our environment is polluted, specifically when we are referring to the Nairobi as a right. city. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, you know, garage, garage, garages, you know, the mechanic, mechanics uh, uh, do a number of things. And uh, most of the time I see, I have a walk, I find them dumping all of the waste, you know, mm. in the rivers. And speaking from a matter of fact, uh, currently when you're looking at the situation along River Nairobi, you will uh, check note Nairobi that, uh, River. The, you know, the water, uh -huh. the color of the water is uh, not to the expectation. Right. Is it because they're dumping, you know, the oil and the grease? Yeah. Like, is, like the main, it's like the, the dumping site near a river, a like river. specifically. There because is. I think in the intro you mentioned, you know, mm. plastic somehow always end up in a lake, a drainage system, mm. a river, mm. an ocean, the main part now. Uh -huh. uh, I, I'm not sure whether I got you right. Uh, I said, yeah. um, I meant like plastic always find a way to ending up, you know, at a lake, at an ocean, at a river. Even yeah. uh, th there's a graphic photo, they pl not a graphic, there's a photo they played that had, you know, uh, a huge, uh, a mm. huge uh, bunch of, you know, plastic dirt at mm. the ocean. So there's always a way that, you know, it ends up in, 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 in a river body, mm. right? Is there a way that we can, you know, prevent that? You know, how can we stop, you know, people from dumping in rivers, lakes, drainage systems? Mm -hmm. I should say th we, we, we can't have an appropriate way uh, of uh, curbing the dumping of uh, the plastics and in the water bodies. But as I should say we have uh, ways uh, in which we can help improve or reduce, mm -hmm. reduce the dumping. How? Uh, what are some uh, of the ways that you think? One of the ways I think it is just from a personal perspective. No. Like what is an individual going to do? to end uh, the dumping of plastics in uh, the water bodies. It's a matter of what, or which kind of an environment would you mind having right. after doing a certain activity? That's a good question. Sure. Like being sensitive of yeah, your surrounding. Is. Yeah, you sure. Mm. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, Devin, do you think there are ways that we can permanently, uh, yeah, let me say activities that we can permanently do to ensure that we end dumping of plastics in riversides, generally water bodies yeah. well there are many ways we can handle this case well there are many ways also of polluting the environment despite the fact that plastics are being given a higher chance when it comes to pollution in the environment yeah but what do you we think also have they many have been ways. given a higher chance yeah yeah i mean we are when we are talking of pollution mm -hmm. we are mentioning plastics mostly mm -hmm. but still we are we are forgetting the other ways we are polluting the environment and okay. so yeah. maybe i can say it's ignorance and you know when you are focusing on pl plastics alone and forgetting about other ways then it means we are going to you know you know focus our efforts and all our attention on plastics and maybe we can we can successfully, you know, handle the case with plastics. But again, other stuffs will now come in and now ha harm us even more worse than the plastics could have done in the first place. Right. So maybe a, an example. We have chlorofluorocarbons. We have mm -hmm. carbon emissions. You right. know, how people are handling their daily activities. Right. When it comes to engines, we have factories. How right. are they disposing their waste? Those okay. chemicals. Mm -hmm. They might not be disposing plastics in the rivers, but they are mm -hmm. disposing chemicals. So yeah. these chemicals also, you know, I am a human being and I live on this earth. I breathe oxygen, right? That's what I take in. Yeah. And take an example of aquatic animals. The water means a lot to them. 
as much right. as okay. I mean, as much as the air means a lot to me right now. Right. So if you are to dispose harmful stuff to the water, then it means we are not taking good care of an aquatic and you know okay. setup, which also plays a good role in our cycle, our life cycle. We depend right. on one thing in a way or the other. Right. So the best way is to just be sensitive and try as much as possible to minimize on how we handling our daily activities, how we're handling our, you know, our staffs, how we we do our, you know, our activities, how, yeah, I mean. Okay, so, but, but also, you know, uh, pollution is, is really large. It's like now we've narrowed it down to like soil and water. It can go from air pollution to sound pollution. Uh, uh, Abraham, you mentioned, you know, at the garage, uh, the oil and the grease somehow yeah. finds its way in the river. Mm. And you mentioned of Nair Nairobi River. Yeah. Uh, now, when it comes to other, other means of like, you know, having alternatives of survival, especially when it comes to Nairobi, <laughs> of course, cars are the biggest, uh, biggest emitters of uh, air. Especially, yeah. you mentioned carbon fluoroxide, but I yeah. think it's carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide oxide. Uh, mm -hmm. That is a gas that's actually, it's a choking gas. So when we have it released majorly in the air, especially in Nairobi, at some point you find that there's places where there's no enough fresh air. And so there's need to actually plant trees. There's need to, sh to ensure that we have enough aeration. In places like offices, even right now, we have air con system because we just want to keep our air clean. But then when it comes to actually mitigating that, do you think that there, there, there are ways that we can, especially from a student's perspective, mm -hmm. how can we have this conversation begin from you guys who are still in school so that by the time you're getting outside here, you already have the information to even empower like two, three, four, five people even more? Yeah, sure. I can say being sensitive on how we handle our activities is the best idea. Because, take an example, we've just said emission of various gases, like maybe the nitric acid gas, the, you know, those harmful gases to the environment, and most of them are emitted by vehicles and so on. So if, as young people, we can come up with inventions, maybe, and come up with, you know, machines that do not really depend so much on fuel and such like kind of stuff that are very harmful to the environment and come up with ideas that maybe are an alternative you know they will perform the same function the, the vehicles are serving us but yeah. on a different way not depending on fuels maybe right. people are now coming up with electric vehicles right. well to me again this a meat because people are saying electric vehicles as much as they don't depend on fuel uh -huh. then it's a repercussion i mean it's in a way reduces emissions and pollution to the environment. Uh -huh. But not really. Well, it's, it you has disagree? some positive impact, with right? Yeah. Not totally, but uh -huh. it, I mean, it has a positive impact, yes. Uh -huh. Because as much as, you know, we are not emitting those gases, right. but also, you know, the vehicles personally, the, you know, they charging, the charging mm. part of it takes uh -huh. place from, you know, fuel, fuel plants. And mm. so, the vehicle itself is not, you know, emitting gases directly, uh -huh. but yeah. where is it being charged from? Uh -huh. The whole cycle will still go back to the fuels. Uh -huh. So there is so no So your way. point is the charging <laughs> systems could possibly come from like using fuel, yeah, yeah, like yeah. liquid possibly, fuel. Possibly, yeah, yeah. Oh, are, possibly, yeah, not yeah. certain. <laughs> but <laughs> well, in a way, it's certain. In but a way. Do you know, that's the president's. Uh, that's that's actually one of the uh, president's uh, target for ensuring that we have e-mobility in the country, which right. he calls it the e-mobility target project to ensure that we eradicate use of fossil fuel and then we have electric vehicles that includes motorbikes. And I think he talked about it in his. Uh, Madaraka Day speech, yeah, if you yeah. watched, he talked about immobility and he's going to ensure like half of Nairobi, they embrace it, which I feel is a good move to, you know, curb uh, carbon emissions from yeah, sure. cars it's a good and, move. and the it's rest a good of move. machines. It's a uh -huh. good move because it eradicates to some extent. Okay. And if we are to take that direction and maybe everybody's embracing the same, then we'll have done something positively in a bit. But totally, we, are not, we have not just run away from you know pollution totally it right. does not you know do away with it completely but it's uh i can say it's a, a measure in a way right. that maybe tries to handle the issue okay. and so we can also try and press you know just taking care of the environment if i'm planting trees right now maybe i go to a dump site uh, where you know waste are all over plastics that's what we're talking of and even metallic cans maybe those that 
cannot decompose easily. Then yeah. in such a place, I, I maybe I reclaim it to something like a forest or something. I try, I plant trees. So, well, we must have dump sites. That's a fact that also we cannot run away from because yeah. where are we going to take our waste? Okay. So we must have them, but at least if we are go taking good care of, there is a way we can handle such like places so that mm. they, are n they don't cause much impact. They don't okay. really harm us mostly, okay. but at least in a way reduce. Yeah. Well, yeah. All right, uh, let me come to you, Abraham, with a different question. Do you think activists in Kenya who are passionate about um, climate change and advocacy are not as highly you know, recognized, Ama, they are not there. Have you heard of any climate change advocate so far that you could say, yes, I know one, he's from my university, or I'm even one myself? Have you, have you come across one? Not really, uh -huh. but um, one thing I wanted to interrupt, but then yeah, sure. I... Yeah, I you can interrupt and then yeah. you'll answer your question. You, you talked of a way, like, how can I... Uh, the question you posted to Mazali, like, can I have something to tell someone somewhere? Right, uh, about now, climate change. Yeah. yeah. From a student's perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I should see, w as much as we are talking of uh, plastic dumping, mm -hmm. as well with uh, pollution from industries. Yeah. Uh, Nairobi as a county, I should say, with a number of uh, uh, industries here right. mm -hmm. that uh, do pollute the environment. Mm -hmm. But should we see the government is working that extraordinarily to mm -hmm. ensure that whichever the emission Right. that gets to the environment is as a, at par to the laws governing the industrial emissions. Mm -hmm. no, so that is one of the things that I should say the government should uh, be looking at when uh, initiating the registration of uh, these industries. Mm -hmm. you know? the companies that yeah. especially emit. Sure. But m you realize most of the emissions are liquid from the, the industries you're mentioning. Yeah. Most of them are liquid and especially it goes down to sewage, yeah. water, polluted water, like yeah. chemical chemicalized water that is released to the river. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And I, you, you know, I wanted to see like uh, whether the emissions are liquid form mm -hmm. or gaseous form. Nice. You know, the company should just be to, you know, regularize mm -hmm. in such a way that, you know, before the emissions or before the, 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 the they release they discharge, it to yeah. Mm -hmm. They have to go through the, the, the required procedures before mm -hmm. releasing such to the environment. And why should mm -hmm. they be released to a river? Why not have your own dumping site as a company and you know preserve your own waste? At some Is point, it possible? At some point again you should be thinking of, you know, population mm -hmm. density maybe in Nairobi. Right. As much as we are talking of uh, maybe a way in which an industry can uh, uh, work on having it is it's own waste, in the waste management yeah mm -hmm. we should be looking at how much space do we have so right. far to to instill such systems yeah. so you think it's, it can be very difficult to manage it since the population is really it's a populous you know you know number of people living you know, in nairobi i should not say it's difficult uh -huh. but then you know in as much as we we are, we are looking for change uh -huh. there are things we can't just work and do Okay. There are things we do in steps. Gradual things at times, you know, will at last lead to the, the, the main aim. Mm -hmm. So if, they, uh, if the industries are to instill such systems, I should say they, they, they need to work. Mm -hmm. You know, industries work on profits, you know. Okay. So for them to, to ensure that your profit in Akujana, like your, whatever they, they, they gave us uh, capital for, running their, their companies in that mm -hmm. duration in okay. a rhyme uh, uh -huh. profit in a talker okay like what they put as the capital in a toshana na profit in a talker okay it's no, 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 but it's all right <laughs> maybe maybe you know i can come i can come it, up again yeah? so it's okay uh, yeah. we can we can move on to something else do you mm -hmm. think uh it's possible Mm. for us as Nairobi citizens mm. to permanently do away with plastics like let's embrace easy carry back is a green Kabisa? like it's possible kwa maziwa uendo bio menopate koko carry back ya red i've not seen it so far <laughs> even for milk especially ile milk una choteo na ikewa it's it will always end up in a in a colorless plastics polythene bag is mm. it possible to permanently do away with it before we come to the myths and misconceptions i should see uh, personally it's not an easy thing to end the use of uh, the plastic carrier bags, so for, like you said. 
because uh, we've, uh, you know, living in a country with uh, different people with different mindsets, okay. we should say people have different ways in which they perceive change. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, oh, sure. Go to ahead. to for if we are to talk of eradicating, then uh -huh. it means all of us would be having the same mentality in which we treat plastics, right. which is not the case when living in such a county. Sure. You know? Sure. Mm -hmm. mm. Nice. Uh, Devin? Well, on means or maybe how we handle our... How we can plastics. eradicate plastics in Nairobi. Like when we buy maziwa, we buy maziwa. Is it even logical? When we buy maziwa, we It's not logical. You know. Well, having uh -huh. such like bags, you know, the current ones, those we're using right now, is a good move when uh -huh. it comes to handling the environment and pollution matters. But it does, it, it, you know, we cannot just do away d with polluting bags completely. Mm -hmm. Because in a way or the other, we need these politin bugs i mean they yeah uh, sure we cannot you know you cannot go for to a mama mboga and you expect her to you know give you maybe maybe a, a vendor a, let me say a fruit vendor and you want something liquid to be give to be served to you in a in a in a polythene. I mean, yeah. these current bags, I, n I don't know what material they made of from, mm -hmm. because it's not silk, it's not cloth. It's I not don't cotton understand. Yeah, it's not yeah. co cotton mm. neither. But, you know, when it comes to mboga and, you know, the stuffs rest. you can handle easily when well, uh, it's possible. Yes, but liquid uh, stuffs, it's, not, it's quite impossible. So right. in a way, we can try to eradicate on how we are using plastic bags. Yeah. But like we, we cannot minimize. just do away. Yeah, we minimize. <laughs> minimize we minimize. Because we, minimize we can't use. permanently eradicate. Yeah, permanently, it's okay. quite impossible. Because so as you think on that, I'm just about to give you a little bit of uh, uh, what the president said. Uh, I'm, I'm going to find it shortly. But I want you to think of oh, what are some of the household activities that we do personally that pollutes the environment before we get to all the myths and misconceptions. You can think of two and, and then Devin as well. Yeah. Which are the common ones, even at the campus? You know, I know you guys stay at, uh, at a hostel <laughs> or something, or even home. You know, yeah, let me yeah, imagine yeah. that. Yeah, sure. uh, what are some of the two, three activities that we do ignorantly? Like, bro, he lazima in a chafu, like in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, and the point here is ignorant. Because uh -huh. maybe you are washing and you uh -huh. just pour your water anyhow. You know, you've been using chemicals. You don't know which chemicals are this, you know, which chemicals make up this soap uh, or detergents you've been using. Yeah. So when you're just pouring your water anyhow in the environment you're polluting, maybe in a way it's going to block the, you know, the oxygen circle of the soil and in a way, you know, the organic animals in those soils contribute much in our environment. And so when you're doing such like kind of activities, you are really bringing a negative impact into, you know, the environment. Another example, Maybe you are cooking, right? And we are using fuels. Uh -huh. You know, we can embrace things like gas. You know, those don't. Or maybe use electricity. That's a good move. When you're using electricity, comparatively when, to somebody using a stove, you know, using kerosene or something. So in a way, this person using an electric cooker then must be reducing or you know, minimizing on the you know, emissions and totally, you know, at the end of the day, the impact would be much better on the environment or much worse. So in a way we can, I can say, well, let's just be conscious and be sensitive on our activities and we'll really handle this, though we cannot just do away with it completely. So the point here is minimizing and, com you know, slowly coming up with measures that maybe seem to be alternatives to right the whole big deal. Yeah, Abraham, before I come to you, let me read uh, before this, this goes out. Uh, <clears throat> this was at, uh, uh, the president spoke at uh, Rotterdam uh, in an in a, in African Climate Summit uh, held at the Global Center Adaptation, abbreviated as GCA in Rotterdam once again in Netherlands, and, and it's also in conjunction with Cote d'Ivoire. He said, uh, quote unquote, uh, climate change is a global threat. It's not about who contributed to it or not. It's about how we work together to address it. And then he also said, climate change possesses a threat to all nations that must now work together or perish together. So it's a fight. And then he also added that climate change is influencing every conversation across the globe, citing education, water provision, agriculture, trade, security, and health. 
and uh, the rest are uh, some of the ministers that were present. But you guys, do you, do you support that? Do you, do, do, you, do you feel like it's a global threat, not just been pointing that, you know, Kenya is not doing enough and we need to actually be sensitive and we need to do something about changing uh, and conserving our climate? Well, climate change right now is a, go a global threat and statistics have it that Africa right now is the most, you know, affected country when it comes to pollution and I mean climate change and you know climate change comes from pollution and such like kind of stuff okay. but again statistics again have it that Africa is the most you know continent that's trying to you know when it comes to you know when you're looking at how you know co continents are meeting carbon emissions and you know the greenhouse effect and all like right. such of kind of stuff mm -hmm. Africa is in a way you know trying to reduce and minimize okay. other continents are doing it in a much worse but again like on the other hand it's countries. affecting us yeah okay. and, and then it's affecting us like fossil yeah. countries are doing it so and then instead of them yeah. suffering it's us suffering yeah the effects. we are trying to prevent it but again uh -huh. we are the one getting the effects directly well uh -huh. it's affecting it's affecting them also but uh -huh. not really as it's it's doing it to us. Oh, so it's so, indirectly. Yeah, it's for, for us. <laughs> yeah, for us, maybe okay. it's directly. And okay. now, when we become ignorant as a continent or as an individual level and say, mm -hmm. I do not emit, you know, carbon emissions as my neighbor does, but again, mm -hmm. I get the, you know, the effects more than he does. So yeah. the blame game won't help me at all. You know, Thank I you. might end up saying, then let's all of us just emit. Yeah. Let's just do whatever it takes because, you know, I'm sick and tired of all this because right. I'm trying to prevent and I'm the one getting the effects. So mm -hmm. we, we cannot uh, take such like a conclusion. We okay. really have to, you know, as much as maybe create awareness okay. and maybe try to, <laughs> in a way, through conferences and such like kind of stuff. So know, awareness educate, through conferences. Yeah, right. and maybe right. educate other people on cheer, other cheer, continents cheer, cheer. and how they handle their stuff. All right, absolutely. Thanks for that. Uh, mm. Yes, uh, mm. Abraham. Uh, you talked of, uh, you asked on ways in which maybe we pollute household. the environment from yes. a household. Mm -hmm. I should say, having come from, uh, you know, the rural setup, okay. I should say, Western region specifically, uh, we do uh, work too much in the use of charcoal. Mm -hmm. And I should say, uh, charcoal burning as an issue uh, do emit carbon monoxide, if I'm to mention, but one of the gases, mm -hmm. which contributes to the global warming at last. Right. You know, individual, individual uh, cases, individual cases from uh, different, uh, you know, sources. Maybe if I'm burning from this section, then we have another person burning somewhere. You know, a collective uh, pollution at last would lead to warming, global warming. Okay. I should say there are so much of uh, the drastic effects we face okay. when we experience such. Right. Yeah. Uh, a way in which we can uh, maybe reduce the use of a charcoal, mm -hmm. I should say sensitization at times works the best. Okay. You know, when we sensitize... Uh, so sensitize uh, many, yeah. Yeah. We Through conferences, you know, we okay. can have public addresses, something like that would uh, at last make the public be aware of the possible mm. outcomes. What about alternative uses of cooking energy? Like, uh, 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 the, w what is the other one? Especially that, that has to do with biogas. But yeah. biogas already itself is a gas, yeah, yeah. you know? <laughs> but they see it's one of like uh, the, the immediate, uh, immediate alternative to like using charcoal, like Abraham has mentioned. Mm. Yeah, people are taking it as an alternative. Uh -huh. Well, it's a good move because uh -huh. in a way it reduces. But also, but it's also so maybe burning I and say, releasing smoke. Yeah, or and maybe I can say, are we overthinking, or or uh -huh. maybe the whole big deal cannot just be, you know, completely done away with? Because is it a difficult conversation? Quite, quite, quite difficult. Because as much as there are ways we can, you know, handle it, but mm -hmm. I'm, again, the same ways we can use to handle it are the same ways. Maybe in a way they'll end up, you know, harming us. Okay, but. Comparatively, obviously, there are alternatives in every solution, and in I mean in every ch in a, in in each case. Mm. So, if you are to take a, a step forward, right. as an individual, as a country, as a continent, then we also have to look at the other side of the coin. How will it end up? It sounds yeah. to be quite a good deal, but at mm -hmm. the end, does it even have some you know negative effects 
also. No. Even on so, the burning charcoal, let me interrupt, even on the burning charcoal point, it leads to deforestation. You have to yeah, cut yeah. a number of trees yeah. before mm. you burn them to charcoal and mm -hmm. now come use it. Yeah. So it's already leading to environmental destruction. You know, deforestation and all that. Mm -hmm. So right. in a way, well, it reduces, right? We agree, mm -hmm. we all agree, but again, we have also created a deficit somewhere. Okay. <laughs> but maybe there, is, there are also alternatives. What if I am cutting and then planting? There is yeah. something called the carbon is it credit. Oh, right it's called now. carbon? The carbon credit. All right. Like, for mm -hmm. example, if companies are to emit, you know, gases and all that, there is a, they take the carbon credit and okay. at last that fund, uh, you know, the money, those funds from such like kind of stuff will end up, you know, taking care of the environment. For okay. example, so you are polluting the You're talking the of rivers. climate funding. Yeah, yeah. I, I no, for example, point. I own a company. Uh -huh. I take a carbon credit. So right. even if I am polluting the river, the uh -huh. same fund will be used in on how to reclaim it. All right, you know? I get that point. Yeah. So that those point. are alternatives. So okay. if I am cutting trees and maybe, you know, selling charcoal, <laughs> mm. then from the fund I get, I buy a few seedlings to plant. So okay. in a way, I created a deficit but I have also made you know come up with a way on how to you know to fill the the, the, the blank and right. a solution kind of right uh, let's get to the myths and misconceptions <laughs> or perceptions rather what are some of the of the I say some of the things that we talk about lately especially when it comes to climate and you mean but we will come back to global warming climate change and global warming will come back to it later but what are some of the common things that we talk about you know we just assume you know but then what what are, what are the rest of the common things that we just assume about the climate yeah one well, of the misconceptions uh, maybe i should say people have at times is that uh, the individual uh, actions can't lead to maybe climate change, mm -hmm. if I'm to talk of. At some point, you will realize that uh, if uh, so many individuals would practice something that will lead to maybe, you know, pollution, uh -huh. as a collective perspective, we would see changes in the climate. So it, is, it would be a misconception saying that an individual action can't affect mm -hmm. climate. In as much as we, we are seeing it being that little in some way. Uh -huh. Yeah. So in short, we get up a bunch of nini pale tau. See at what was he assuming it affect? It affect. Yeah, it at last, the, yeah. To uh, kiamua to dupe water. Water, right? Uh, you know. I get your point. At last, to the, we would have the, the effects coming yeah, now. I get your point. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, Devin. Yeah, there are various myths myths on this topic. For example, I just mentioned earlier. The use of you know electric vehicles have less impact on the environment, and that's right. Mm -hmm. But also they have also a negative impact on the environment. Right. So, to me, it's kind of a myth or something. And also, uh -huh. there is something that we can do away with carbon emissions uh -huh. completely. We cannot uh -huh. just do away with them completely. Maybe uh -huh. what we can do is to you know minimize. And so this brings up a point of ignorance. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if media and everybody is talking about, mm -hmm. let's embrace, you know, electric vehicles. Right. Let's do away completely with carbon vehicles, I mean mm -hmm. carbon emissions. So that's what everybody is going to do in the public setup. Okay. But again, they are forgetting now that it also also some negative effects. So okay. as much as, the, you know, the media and everybody and the government tries uh -huh. to come up with measures to reduce the pollution and, you know... Right come up with ways to, you know, to handle the climate change issue. It, right. it should also, you know, sensitize the public on the, the negative sides. So that right. as much as I'm taking this as a measure, then at the end of the day, how will it affect me? If not right. me, how will it affect my neighbor and right. my society and everybody at large? But right. so, you know, when I know all the sides of this coin, then I know if I handle this this way, this how it will end up. And right. if it ends up this way, it will be a good idea or maybe not. If not, then I might choose the other alternative. Right. So ways here, I mean, chances here are, let's, right. you know, look at ways that if not totally handling this issue, then mm. at least you'll create more positive impact, impact than the negative side. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. What if uh, on a perception or, or a myth, uh, let's imagine you're sitting in a matatu going back to going back home, yeah. and uh, you bought this uh, a small bottle of Coca Cola just around yeah. here. You drink, you finish, and, and you just straight you throw it while the vehicle is in motion, and just assume yeah. you know it and yeah. potato yeah. magically. Yeah. You, you but it's gonna affect it a cow then. that will cross the road, a goat, na yeah. itakula, and then it and a kufe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know you've so, just assumed magic will happen, yeah. but you've polluted the environment? <laughs> so people are just reckless. Mm -hmm. They assume if I do this, as much as it's not affecting me directly, I mean, then everything is okay. But it's right. not okay at the end of the day because in a way it will still come back to you. Okay. I just finish maybe a, 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 you know, a sweet juice and then throw out that catambula. Or right. the they are made of plastics, right? Yeah. And you know, I don't mind how it, it will end up. Okay. So in a way it's going to you know affect somebody else mm -hmm. so i can say let's be you know sensitive on what we do if yeah. i am handling this even <laughs> i mean just everything because now this are talk we are talking about every activities you know this is our environment and right. whatever handles then it must have either positive or negative impacts on the environment so if you are going to handle it in a right way then it won't bring negative effects but if you are to handle it in the right way then it will be, you know, everybody will be happy because everything will run as, you know, smoothly and in a good line as we all expect. Okay, uh, as we finish up, but let's uh, to say about global warming. <laughs> yes, <laughs> let me interrupt. Say your we've, point, uh, yeah. we've another misconception uh -huh. that uh, renewable sources of energy are infinite. Like uh -huh. they never, they are inexist, inexist, inexhaustible. Uh -huh. You know, I should say, uh -huh. you know, in as much as they are renewable. Okay. You know, when we are using them in a, in a way, we are not that keen, you know, their times can be drastically perishing, you know. We yeah. may lack them at last. Okay. Now, when we are talking of uh, maybe renewable forms of energy like uh, with uh, fuel, wood fuel, uh -huh. in as much as it is renewable, but mm -hmm. what if we use them but we don't have that, you know, inside feeling like we should keep replacing. If you're burning charcoal, like we've said, okay. reforestation. Right, too. Mm -hmm. You're getting. Mm -hmm. So if we are not that much keen, okay. renewable forms at last can also end up being what? Exhausted. All right. Now, yeah. uh, layman's language, call him say, I'm going to talk about the stories of climate change. As in, we have a conversation. Because uh, I'd say people who live, especially in extreme ends of like Dandora, where there's the biggest dump sites in Nairobi, uh, Kayole, 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 Jones, Oyole. How do you start this conversation? Umambi, eh, manze, ukifanya hivi na hivi, ina pollute. But then you'll also realize even, um, I'd say, bath control, bath control uh, uh, measures like condoms are still plastic mm. anyways, yeah. you know, which we advocate for, you know, a lot. Onezanzaje your conversation. Well, I'm if saying. you are to bring such like a topic to somebody deep down, you know, <laughs> on, on, on ground, yeah. these are people, they feel like if, I, if, if this stuff is not affecting me directly, then it's not my concern. So right. if you are to bring to him or her such like a topic, then you have to mention something that to him or her sounds like it's going to have an impact on her, on his or her life directly, you know, positively. So, for example, if I come to such like a person and introduce a topic, instead of you know just disposing these plastics anyhow, what if we come up with a business idea and now you know <laughs> try to create them, you know, create you know bricks or tiles or something. Right. So, so to him, it will sound more like a business idea, mm -hmm. and you know that's it will entice some, him to, yeah, to yeah. fall for the trap. <laughs> yeah, he will definitely, <laughs> definitely. But again, deep down, you know. I know my intentions. In the first right. place, I wanted to, you know, me and him to, you know, to conserve the, the environment. Yeah, to right. conserve the environment and curb the whole man. And now it's a business. Yeah, <laughs> and you're yeah. making money. <laughs> now, uh, on that point, do you think even the advocates, I'm an activist who are climate, let's say, what when you're compassionate about, you know, you can't throw that plastic bag. Mm -hmm. If you throw it, you must pick it now or mm -hmm. I take you to the police. Mm -hmm. You know, do we have such people in Kenya? Are they less? Are they more? Are you one yourself? <laughs> do you have a vision? <laughs> Because uh, right, I, 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 the ones we read about in the news outlets are very, like, it's a handful. They're not even, like, ten. Yeah. But there's one I think we interviewed here, I think, two months ago, who was saying that, you know, you can pollute your soil, you can prevent it, but you can never 
you know, uh, you can never conserve the air. Mm -hmm. You know, what you pollute in the air, it's either you have to find a machine that goes into the mm -hmm. air to filter it out, mm -hmm. or you just stop releasing gas into the air. Now, when it comes to such activists who are passionate about, you know, advocating for clean air mm -hmm. in Nairobi, are they, are they even funded? Are they even recognized? Do we need even yeah. a system that actually needs to be implemented to actually bring them on board? Yeah, really. I second you because I think we really need a system. And maybe even if it means, uh, <laughs> you know, a body in the government that really right. plays that role. And because what if maybe, take for instance, I'm really into this case of, you know, curbing the menace about climate change and polluting the environment. But now, okay, in a while, be, I might be also spending. I, mm -hmm. I'm using funds maybe to help me, you know, you know, Do educate everybody yeah. campaigns and right. all that, you know, social right. awareness, public awareness. Right. But now, so in a way I'm spending, but there are no, there are no outcomes. There are no incomes. So uh -huh. if I am supported, then I also mm -hmm. get enticed and have more energy to do the same. Right. So these people are very few in our current setting, in our okay. common setup. Uh -huh. Why do you think there are few? Is it because well, you're mentioning the source of money? I could not yeah, yeah, yeah. motivate. Because if you're really to do it, then uh -huh. it must be deep down Funding, from your heart. Right. And because you must, yeah, it must be out of passion. Mm -hmm. Because in a way, you're not getting anything from it. So as okay. much as you're sensitizing people on how to, you know, take care of the environment, but well, it helps, but on your side, you are losing. Okay. So if you have passion and really want to help the society, then you will do it. That's right. why we have a few individuals who are still insisting in the same and they are doing it. So right. I think the good move will be if we have, you know, a government okay. supported something, you know, to help such like kind of people and, you know, and these people, I, I think we can make them feel proud and, you know, support them. Right. The government can say, you know, we are, we are offering you this, you know, a certain media house or something, uh -huh. uh, you know, such like shows and you will be airing it to everybody. We are offering you maybe vehicles, you know, those road, yeah. road shows and whatever. So uh -huh. they feel encouraged. But at the end of the day, who turns up to a road show about, you know, climate change? Are they people who are passionate about <laughs> it or people who are concerned or affected people? Well, no. Which is a good conversation, <laughs> but we're out of time. Yeah. I think we can have a part two, by the way. This is a really important conversation, but it's a difficult one to have because it needs more insight and it needs more backup. Uh, just say your social media in, in a <laughs> second, please. Uh, oh, where can right. people catch you as we go? Uh, yeah, it can be found on uh, all the social media platforms. Right. Uh, my, name's, uh, my name is uh, Abraham Omusungu. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On South Twitter. South. Everywhere. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, you? um, on YouTube at Driplet Viper 1300 and on TikTok, find me at Dev Arts. On IG, get me at Alvin Gavio. So they are quite different, but that's how I operate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you guys have interesting <laughs> handles. <laughs> hey, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, so at Y254 channel, underscore on the gram, at Brian Sako 101, hashtag Goa in the morning. My good name is Sako. See you tomorrow for Health Tuesday and Entrepreneurship Tuesday. Have a fantastic Monday. See you tomorrow.